G'day everybody, it's the Footy Talk Podcast. No way though today, it's just Woodsy and Maroon. Hello Woodsy. Hello Maroon, he's, he's brushed us, he's got the weekend, or the week off, yeah. they've got the boys, had a great win, great couple of wins actually for the Sharks, mm. so mm. a well-deserved break for Wado. Uh, I think his missus pulled rank and yeah, they're going on for a little bit of a holiday. Yeah, they are in one of what, five teams on 16 points, so. Yeah, they've had a, a real good like last month of footy, I reckon, yeah. you know, similar to what Canberra were, they, they were a little bit down the ladder, then they've had a couple of good wins, it's pushed them right up there. It's probably that magic round game where the Dolphins got them, remember the Dolphins that, well, had... That's like, the only game you can think of that mm. Cronulla have been poor in, other than that, they've been pretty good, mm. you know, and there's <laughs> they had a great season last year. Um, all signs that, you know, Craig Fitzgibbons is one of the outstanding coaches, spent a lot of time under Robbo at the Chooks and waited for the right opportunity. And that's what you hear a lot of coaches this day and age. They need to wait for that right opportunity to yeah. get the right squad. Mm. Mate, um, just before, obviously we want to talk a bit of origin today and yep. uh, a couple of other things that are going on, e.g. the bunker. Oh. Uh, but before we do, look, there was an incident with you over the weekend, just for anyone who missed it. Well. When we're on air, just to explain to our, oh. our loyal <laughs> podcast listeners, when we're on, read, call, we're calling the footy and, the, and they go, and the ball goes here, the ball goes there. And, and but they're in the, in your ears, somebody will say, like our producer, Charlie White, who, by the way, has got the biggest zit I've ever seen in my life <laughs> on his head today. <laughs> Charlie will say to you, read this. Uh, I'm going to put an ad in your hand for, in this case, it was KO. Advertising. Yeah. Yes, and, yeah. When this, I, and ours was at halftime. Yeah. And when you get the go ahead, I want you and Woodsy to read this ad. But you didn't pre-read it. And so you read out what you were supposed to know, not read. Well, so the instructions for the ad. Yes. So I, I did stuff up there. Let's hear it. Then I'll, t- I'll give you my take on it. Right. After. Okay. Yes, Maroon. If you're a sports fan, name a better duo. You probably can't because right now you can get 12 months of KO, basic included with a new Telstra home internet plan. That's bloody good. KO and Telstra, what a combo. Get 12 months of KO basic with a new Telstra home internet plan. It could change your life. Yes, Maroon. Head to Telstra.com for all the details. Bolded text equals must be said verbatim. Looking for something fun to- Bolded text equals <laughs> must be said verbatim. Oh, mate. So he's supposed to look at that and take instructions, not read out. <laughs> I don't even know what yes. verbatim means. Bolded what, text that? equals <laughs> must be read verbatim. No, but see, the thing is. And, he, and it, it, had when, the, it didn't say equals. It's had it the had little the equals, equals thing like a sum. <laughs> <laughs> that was a huge stuff up. But you know what? Yeah. Because there's two main commentators, and that's you're the main caller. Dan Ganane, who's the other main caller, he has a straight and narrow what he likes to be done. Yeah. You're just a free flow off the cuff. So every time I've read it, whatever word's in front of you, to follow you from behind, it's so hard. So I just don't even bother reading it at the start. Right. I just go, yeah. go with the flow. I, I would just close this off by saying you told your new colleagues, your new teammates <laughs> at Manly, that I was a Derek. I don't know what a Derek <laughs> is. I don't know what a Derek is, but... I'll you take the are Derek a massive. I got the Derek trophy after that. Oh, uh, you are a fitting and walking, talking <laughs> Derek festival. Oh, mate, that was a shocker. Anyway, let's talk about uh, state of origin. Um, let's. I'll quickly go through the teams uh, for anyone who hasn't, for chance, heard them. For uh, Queensland, Reese Walsh is the fullback. Cobbo and Tuolangi on the wings. Val Holmes and the Hammer in the centres. Harves and Munster and Cherry Evans. Flegler Collins up front. Hunt is the hooker. The back row for Feeder Gilbert Carrigan. But the bench looks good too. Harry Grant, uh, Big Tino, Reuben Cotter and Jai Arrow. So it's a very stiff bench, very strong bench. New South Wales, Tedesco at fullback. To'o and Addo Carr. Then Latrell and Tom Trebojevic in the centres. So the Penrith 5, 8 and half stay together. Jerome, Luai and Nathan Cleary. Up front, Pengai Jr. and Haas. Appy Corusau is now the hooker. Tyson Frizzell comes back with Hudson Young. Well done, Hudson. And Isaiah Yeo was always going to get picked. And then the New South Wales bench, Junior Paulo, Cam Murray, Liam Martin, Nico Hines. So I'll start with Queensland if I can. Woodsy, the old Queensland pick and stick thing Uh, is out the window. How good is it, mate? I, I, I love seeing them. It's like they're panicking a little bit. Yeah. And some of the players that they haven't, you know, Dane Gay Guy, He's got the nickname Origin Gay Guy. Like when he puts that maroon jersey on, he's a different player. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I, I know. Got, I got and, what you're saying. And Kalen Ponga. Kalen Ponga, like from all reports, all he had to do was get through that game. That's what I thought. Um, you know, we were calling that game. Obviously, when he went down with the HIA, we thought, oh, he's gone, but he come back on. And then you hear some things from, you know, when he, he miscorrected the, the tackle count, you know, th- those things didn't go yeah, in his favor yeah. because. Mm. Origin comes under fatigue, and if that happens in Origin, you know, that's a big blunder. You don't want to be giving New South Wales any opportunities. So, but for me, the big one is Kurt Capewell. I thought he's been outstanding for them for the last, I think, two or three uh, series he's been involved in. Yeah. They're thereabouts, their best players. So, 
Um, I know David Fafita's hit some good form, but you know, a player like Kurt Capo who can play back row, can play centre, he's just such a versatile player. So it, it's funny because they always talk about loyalty. You know, when you when we're Maroon, we, we stick to our same pick and stick, and they haven't done it. Whereas we're a bit different. We've actually gone back to the old team, and you can tell with our side, there's been a lot of input from Nathan Cleary. So that's a good thing that Freddie's gone to him. He spoke to who he wants. You know, the spine we've got, everyone's a, a, a Penrith or an ex-Penrith player by James Tedesco, which is a really good thing because you don't want to be wasting opportunities, you know, especially game one, because I think whoever wins game one this year pretty much is, uh, you know, is going to win the series because that first one's in Adelaide, then you go to, you know, you don't want to be going down 1-0, going to Suncorp if you're New South Wales. So, um, and there's some, you know, some different, different picks that probably no one would have picked with Tavita Pengai. Um that's a, you know, that's a curveball, but obviously that's with Jake Travorovic going down with a, with a calf. And the only thing with that is it's Jakey just ties up the middle defensively. Um, you know, you've got a lot of ball players there, like to carry the ball to Vita Pengai, Payne Haas, Frizzell, Hudson Young, but we just need to keep that middle nice and tight. That's the only bit I'm worried about. So Appy obviously is at nine, no Damien Cook in the squad at all. Yeah, I, I don't mind that. You know, um, I reckon you've got to either... You, you go with one or, or the other, but then, you know, talking to Wado when we've been on this podcast, he was pretty adamant that if you you pick Hines, you pick him at six or you don't pick him at all mm. because we're sort of making a position, making a change just for, for Nico because he's there. So um, that's probably where you could have had Damien Cook. Um, but there must be something that, you know, that Freddie sees that we don't see. So, um, but he, you know, in saying that, Nico does deserve it. He's been a Dalian player last year. He's been one of the form players this year. Missed the first couple of rounds. If he had played those, he'd probably be leading the Dalian count. But if you, I mean, you can't, I mean, there's 26, 30 players that deserve it, Woodsy. I know he deserves it, but how do you see them using Nico off the bench? At the moment, I'm not sure um, because I don't see him playing hooker. Um, I, I, I might see him as a, you know, maybe bring out Jose Yo off. Could be a bit of a link man, like that third pivot that they play. It's sort of like that's why I called for Dylan Walker maybe to be a chance of playing because he, he does drift across field. He's a he's a, a really good runner of the ball, but then defensively I don't know where he defends there. So um, the idea of having Nico, that's why myself and Wade went too too keen on having him on the bench. You either start him at five eight or not because we don't know exactly. Do you do you move? Is he in there for cover for Tommy or is he in there for cover for for Josh Addo Carr? Do we have to move players around to fit him in, you know, or is, are we relying on the form of Luai? If he hasn't had a good start to the game, do we pull him off? Mm. So I'm not too sure what they're thinking. And like, you, you know, pretty much like you said, I'd probably look for either a different type of lock or maybe Damien Cook on the bench. But let's go back now to the Queensland side. And we, we touched on the bench over there. Uh, Harry Grant, Big Tino, Ruben Cotter, Jai Arrow. So that's a, that's a nice bench, isn't it, to have Har- the, the the privilege of having Harry Grant on the bench. We get into the game, the middle, the New South Wales middle starts getting a bit tired. Wouldn't even, a bit you fatigued, know on comes it, Harry. It wouldn't even surprise me if they swap Carrigan maybe with Tino. Because um, you look at the the, the middle of, of New South Wales, two big boppers in, in Haas and, and Pengai Jr. So, I um, mean, Carrigan did come off the bench last year, um, but Cotter started. So... You know, it, it, it's um, it'll be interesting to see what side actually runs out on the night. But mate, Paddy Carrigan, I think he was the Wally Lewis medalist. Like, what a season he's had! Mm. And then you throw, like you said, you take off Ben Hunt and you put on a player like Harry Grant. Wow, that's a that's a huge. That that's probably where they've got a bit of a you know upper hand on us at the moment. Um, and then the likes of Cotter and Arrow. Like Arrow is just built for Origin. Great, you know, physically, attacking wise, defensively, and he's got that really good late offload that you see for Souths every week. So. Um, it's it's a great side that Queensland pick. I, personally, I think the outside backs is where New South Wales can get them because, you know, you look at Cobbo, he's got a great carry, um, but then you've got Holmes, who's probably not in the form that we've seen of, of last year, either is Tualangi, and, and Hemiso is not the greatest of carry on the backfield. And Reese Walsh, you know, he can, when he's on, he can be firing, but then when teams pepper him, South did it a couple of weeks ago, and he created a lot of errors and, you know, you've got big Latrell coming down, Tommy, big physical bodies that are going to, you know, you can tell what they're going to do. Cleary's going to put those bombs up and they're going to try to ruffle these feathers early on in the game. I don't think you can look at that and and tip New South Wales. I don't think you can look at those Why sides not? and tip New South Wales. Look, I just think they look better on paper up front. The back row, you've got Fafiti, you've got Tom Gilbert, you know what he's capable of, Pat Carrigan, and then... Harry Grant and Tino coming off the bench. The experience of Jai Arrow and Ruben Cotter. Yeah, but we've got Cameron Murray, Liam Martin, Junior Borlo, 
Okay, two grand so finals. Who two we, who's who's going to win? Who's going to win? New South Wales. So, but you're you're just saying that from the heart. You're not saying that from the head. You're not looking why, at those like, two I, squads. I'm loving the spine. You know, I'm loving what we've had. Penrith have won back to back competitions. They've been in the grand final three years in a row. The combination we've got there. Nathan Cleary is the best player in the world. Followed by either you could have a you could have a flip of a coin. James Tedesco or Nathan Cleary. Um, you know the combinations they've had. The the World Cup experience together. Brian Toto, outstanding, best play one carry in the game. Latrell Mitchell, the name just speaks for itself. He's been absolutely outstanding. Turbo's found form. A lot of people have been questioning him. Mm. He gets, you know, a, a bit of space on the weekend and, and shows you what he can do with all the class he's got. So good to have Ado Car back. Not for what he just brings on the field, what he brings off the field. You know, just the the, the energy, you know, the, the, what he does for a group away from rugby league. He brings everyone together. And I like the pack, you know. Probably the question mark would be, you know, Pengai Jr. That one come out of the blue. I, I was, I thought that might have been a chance of, you know, Stefano Udukamanu or maybe even uh, Tavita Tatola from South Sydney. But mm. you can tell Freddie wants to get a big bash and barge forward that's going to ruffle a few feathers early on in the game. So you're tipping New South Wales to of win? Of course I am, yeah. Okay, well, of course, that game will be on Triple M. Uh, all Origin games will be this one, of course, live from Adelaide. State of Origin game one. And uh, we'll look interesting to see how Reese Walsh goes uh, Murray to a lungy. It, you know, it's exciting to see those players get an opportunity. Yeah. But because what you see Reese Walsh do each week, it's and, and from what I've heard about him as well, he watches every game. He loves his rugby league. He's not a kid that just rocks up and goes, "Oh, I'm going to have a crack and, and try a few things." He studies it. He tries hard. I watched a little clip of Adam Reynolds on on social media throughout the week, and he's just sort of said that you know he sees so many things, but he's got to just pick his moments because. The difference between NRL and, you know, playing 20s or reserve grade is the fatigue factor. Like, the game's so quick, it's physical. You're not always going to get those big plays coming off. And sometimes you just need to build to the big play, whether it's, you know, you have a crack at the long, then you bring it back to the middle, and then you have another crack at short. I don't try. I think you can pull it every time. So it's just all about calming him down. And, um, you know, having that calm head in Cherry Evans and Ben Hunt around him, it's going to really help him. And I would love to see him at this level play. Mate, these teams that give a lot of, like, there's teams obviously more so than others that – give a lot of players over to origin. Let's say, for instance, in Queensland, obviously you got um, Reese Walsh, Selwyn Cobbo. Broncos. Uh, uh, what did I say? No, I'm just saying that's the Broncos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Reese Walsh, Selwyn Cobbo, um, blokes like Tommy Flegler, Pat Carrigan. So there's just four players there. So there's a Payne lot of players. Payne Haas. Yep. So they give over a lot of players to origin. So what is it like in club land? Are five or six players have got to step? Do they step up or is it like – you know, the last week of school at, at, at NRL level. It's always a lot quieter when you, when you sort of lose those blokes because, you know, they're such a – they're part of your – probably a lot of the time, part of your leadership group. They're, the, you know, the powerful figures in your club. And when you see those big, you know, those big types of people walking not, – not that they have egos, but they've got presence. And it's sort of like you come to train and it's like, oh, it feels like you're sort of training with 20s or, you know, reserve grade because you've lost those big-name players. And, you know, at times you can probably – you know, your intensity levels of training can drop. But then, you know, when they come back, it just depends. If, if they come back from a win, they're buzzing, they're ready to go. You know, the levels can be pumped up straight away. But then sometimes if you come off a loss and they're a little bit busted, they could be in and out of training. You don't see much of them. It's, it's, a, it's a huge six-week period for those sort of clubs. Mm. You know, look at them. Um, South Sydney, they've got quite a few players in. So, um, and then you look at, you know, that's just probably the hardest part of managing Melbourne. And that's why I think Melbourne is such a good club because they've monitored that so well over the years because they've always had so many players. And, you know, last year you look at Brisbane, they got out of that origin period. They got to round 19, they were coming fourth and they didn't even make the eight. I think they won, they lost seven out of their last eight. Mm. And that just shows you they didn't handle the origin period well. You know, the training, um, you could be in with these origin players, they could be, you know, busting their backside for that 10 days because the origin camps, they're, they're very intense. Like the training sessions probably aren't as long as what you do in club land, but they're so much more intense. You got all the best players around you. Um, you don't want to let the bloke down. So they just play at a, a cutthroat speed. Then when you get back to, to your club land, sometimes they might give you a couple extra days off just to recover from the game. And then sometimes you might play on a Wednesday night origin and you might back up on a Friday. Yeah. So then you get a longer, longer, longer period off. And it just... It just sort of stents, stunts your, your momentum that you could have as a group or, you know, there's certain loads that they want you to get to each week and it just changes as far as a curveball. And so that's that's where the high performance from each club and the coaches, they really got to knuckle down and get that right. So let's talk about, you, you were talking there about backing up. You always yep. backed up. Yep. But when you come back, what is it? Is it, does the Does your NRL club say, 
Do you feel like backing up, or do they make you feel obligated to back up? Or no, is well, it... they always ask how do you how are you feel, and the first thing you come back to your phone after an Origin, you always got a text or a phone call, and from the coach or you know your team manager, how'd you pull up, blah blah blah, and you always talk to me. You know, I'm telling you, every player has a beer. You know, it's 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 a huge you know moment. Um, you always get around each other. Um, you know, I remember there was one. I think we had Ivan Cleary in 2017. You know, we had a, a it was a Sydney game. We had a big big drink afterwards. He, he messaged me and I said, yeah, we're just having a few beers now. We're going to have a good crack and we'll play on the Friday night against Gold Coast. And he just goes, mate, if, you, if you're ready, you don't even need to come to captain's run. Just sleep it off tomorrow, um, which was a Thursday. And then just make sure you get to the game on Friday. And then, yeah, and, mm. you know, to, to, if you're in, just give me your word. And if you're yeah. not, you're not. And then what they do from there, if you give them your word, they still have a player on standby just in case. Um, but... Yeah, I got to the game, got to the team meeting. Um, it was all good. And yeah, ended up running out there with the boys. And for me, we, we won that game, but we lost the series. But because you're on a bit of a high, you won. You just want to get out there and be around your teammates. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's, it's unreal to represent your state, but you also, you've got a job for your club. You know, I'd rather play that game for the club and maybe have a couple of days off after that because they're your teammates. They're the ones that helped you get that origin mm. spot because by them playing well, it, it gave the opportunity for the selectors to look at you. It is a bit unfair uh, for a guy who loves his club league as a supporter more than anything I oh, love my club league. Yeah. And you, you look at somebody like the Tigers. Now, finally, it's all starting to click into gear. <laughs> you know, is, yeah. They've probably won three of their last four. They put 66 points on the Cowboys. Now, Appy is going to play origin. Yeah, it is. Well, that's a, that's a price you pay for success, Maroon. Um, you know, and then there's a lot of talk around this period, the quality of football drops, you know, because you see a lot of players out and a lot of players don't back up, whether it's injury or you lose players through injury over extended time. Um, and this is what the good clubs do. They blood those players, you know, they give them the game experience the previous years or earlier that season. Um, you know, when players are 50-50, to, to just give them that experience around this this period of time. You know, at Manly, we had, you know, there's talk before the game that we obviously had both Turbo Brothers um, Cherry Evans and Ola Kowatu were all a chance of making. Obviously, we only got two. Jakey's, I think he's had a calf complaint. Um, Ola Kowatu was unlucky to miss out. So it's just one of those guys. It's, it's that next man in mentality. But as a fan, I can see why they get frustrated because you want to go there and watch the best players. So hmm. you could look at your, your memberships and go, oh, we've got these games at Manly. 100% want to go. But not, not knowing that, oh, yeah. that's during origin yeah. period. We're hmm. not going to see Turbo. We're not going to see Cherry Evans. They're the two. They're the highlights package of Manly. So... I can see where they get frustrated from, but at the end of the day, the players get recognition to be the best in the game. they got to play those rep games. Speaking of the highlights package at Manly, uh, Woods, you know Wado today, obviously. You've, yep. uh, Wado's uh, having a week off. But uh, speaking of the highlights package at Manly, uh, yesterday, 42 points to 14 over Canberra. I didn't see that coming. And obviously, Josh Schuster had a, a – he scored a try, but he did have a great game. The thing is with Josh Schuster – is I don't think anyone doubts not at all what he the ability that he has. No, nah, he's got that freakish ability. Um, it's a very similar mold to that Fletty Mateo. Like he's a, probably you know he's probably a bit quicker than what Fletty was, but he's just got that that ability to you know just create just things that other players can't do. And and what he does, like he goes to the line, he's got the no lookers. He can engage defenders, and it really frees up Tommy. You know, the week prior against the Sharks, Nico Hines read it well. You know, we are playing some shape off Cooper Johns and he'd just rush up at the back because he's played with Cooper before. He knows he goes slow to fast and then he'd just take Tommy's time off him. Whereas when you've got a player like Schuster, he's, he's liable to dead set hit a lead, can step off his left, step off his right, can grub her. And then they scored a try. I think it was Tommy's second try where... So what we did, you know, you read the defense comes up hard. They like to jam, go up hard. So what, practice during the week, you go at the line. And then because they read it, it was similar to what happened with Nico Hines. And, you know, Canberra would have done a bit of focusing on us. So he goes at the line. And then last second, Tommy just called. I don't know what they called because I wasn't there on the field. But you could just see Tommy. He changes his line and then steps back under. And then from that, the inside man chasing Schuster over chased. And then the bloke inside him, which was Corey Horsberg, was more worried about the first drop runner. And then because Tommy's so quick and they can just see things on the run, he dropped under him late and there was just a, a, a five, six meter gap and scores untouched under yeah, the field. Yeah. So he just creates little things that, that other players can't. And you can't, what we call is double defend. So when you get up and then once they pass, you can go drift off. Mm. He just engages you so much that you can't do it. He goes right to the line. And the other thing is, 
poor old Cooper's 80 kilos ring and wet. He's 110, 108 kilos, and you, you just can't underestimate his power and speed because he'll run straight over you. Yeah, but where does he go from here? Because well, he, like... I think it was a great wake-up call for him, right. you know? Um, um, but the other thing was, he was busted. Like, he hurt his calf or hurt his quad. It was one or the other. I can't remember which one it was. Quad. Quad. So... Um, and I remember going into the Tigers game and speaking to him afterwards, he said it was still tight afterwards. So he wasn't there fully in his head. He, he wasn't hundred percent over his body. And, and sometimes players, you know, they need to be fully right with their body. Some players can't play injured or, or busted. And, um, it's something that he's got to learn as he grows older because we need him out there every week and, uh, what it could have done, it could maybe teach him how to look after his body a lot better, but you know, and, and from that, he's been so much better at training. You can even tell he's lost a lot of weight from the jerseys they're wearing on the weekend. He looked a lot more trimmer, um, but he just looks happy, you know. And, and I think he realized, yeah, I, I stuffed up. I, I didn't get myself my head right in the right order. But now, you know, this is what I can do when, I, when I'm playing right yeah. and playing mm. fit. Yeah, well, you're only young once, you know, these opportunities exactly. come around. Um, but there has been some criticism with him about, you know, living too far away from the center of it all or nah, that's but... just people nitpicking there. See, look, mate, we've got a, a lot of kids that live out at sort of Western Sydney. Well, I think that's where he lives. Yeah, well, there's he, not anything wrong with that, but... Not, but that's just people like trying to nitpick because he's, you know, he's had a couple of back back injuries and they're saying that he can't drive past a Maccas or a KFC. And I don't, I don't believe that at all, mate. I've, I've seen him drive past, we drive past the KFC at, I think Brookvale all the time. Mm. He's never in there. So well, you can't drive past one either, but I mean, at least you're honest about it. <laughs> exactly right, mate. So, yeah. but look, honestly, when, when the, what is it? When the chips are down, people want to knock you. Yeah. And you know, he, he's got to get himself right, which he's done. He, that, and that's been the biggest step for us to see that he wanted to do it. And he's been in there every day. You know, he's been training with your good mate, big spud Carroll. Um, he's kept him in shape. Um, he's, he's been, mate, you come in some days and as soon as you get off the field, he's back on the, the, the assault bikes or right. the watt bikes yeah, training. Great. So mm. he's got his head in the right spot. And, you know, for us as many players, it's probably the best thing for us. But we need him to continue to do that. Like you said, being a young bloke, you can't keep using that as an excuse. We want him to keep going on the next level. Woodsies Front Row Forum. Front Row Forum. You know, you did say that it is just what people say, but I wonder if the people of Manly, are they saying, what about Woodsy? What a blow-in. He comes here, he <laughs> plays three games, he gets injured, and, you know, yes. he's played for five teams, all of which won on the weekend. Because I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, look, um, what I love to do with, you know, the players is – the blokes that have played the game yep. and in your case still play the game is ask them the questions that, that blokes like me that just love the game, but never had the ability, just that sort of stuff. Like, and, and I wanted to ask you specifically, how did you find out your first origin 2013? Yeah. 2013. Yeah. It yeah. was game two. And and how did you find out you've been picked? You must, people must've been saying to you, Oh, you're probably going to get picked. You pro might get picked. Yeah. Well, there was a bit of talk there, thereabouts the year before I was 18th man for two games in the 2012 series. Um, they went with Tim Grant instead. Um, and, you know, as a player, I love telling these people, like, these sort of stories because it just shows people that dreams do come true. And uh, I'll never forget it. We were playing the Brisbane Broncos on a Monday. Um, and I think, uh, what's his name? Big James Talmout got in trouble around game after game one. He had a bit of misdemeanor and he got a couple of weeks suspension from it from the NRL. So there was always in the back of your mind, there's going to be an opportunity. We could be in, you know, I've been there 18th man. So... You never know. And um, we had a captain's run on the Sunday morning because we were playing the Broncos on a Monday night up at Suncorp. And um, a, a number rang me and I didn't answer it because I don't know. Like, I, I don't answer numbers. I don't know. No. And then literally Farrow rang me like two seconds later because Farrow wasn't playing. That was when he dislocated his elbow. Um, but he was cleared to play Origin 2. So he was already in camp. Um, and he just rang me and he goes, mate, what are you doing? And I was like, just a captain's run, big fella. Um yeah, we just got through it. We just about to get changed and go to the airport. And he goes, mate, that person, the, the, the call that just rang you, that was Loz. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, far out. So and he goes, mate, just give him a quick call back. And he goes, then ring me after it. So I was like, oh, what's happening? I might be 18th man. So I might be just called up to, you know. And then I ring Loz and Loz, uh, hey, mate, how you going? And so, sorry, mate, I was just finished captain's run. Um, you know, we're just getting into the showers, just putting our clothes on and get ready to go to the bus to the airport. And he's just like, mate, um... I just want to let you know, um, you want to, you like watching the origin and all that sort of stuff. So mate, I loved origin as a kid, always grew up watching it. And he goes, well, how about if you play a game? And I was like, oh, no way. You're kidding, mate. And he goes, yeah, mate, you're in our squad. 
Um, you just got to get through this game tomorrow night because <laughs> we had to play the Monday night because they named the side on the yep. Sunday. Mm -mm. And then, mate, honestly, like the goosebumps there, you know, straight away. Yeah. Um, so I spoke to Loz and I was like, oh, I appreciate it, mate. Thank you so much. Um, hang up the phone. Then and I ring my mum. I didn't ring Farrah back straight just away. Just to be clear before you go on. He didn't say to you, you have to have a big game on Monday night. He said, you're in. You just have to not get injured. You're in. Yeah, you're yeah, in. You just got right. to get, just gotta get through yeah, the okay. game. So. so you ring your mum? Yeah, he's already told, told mum. She's like going off her head. She couldn't believe it and starts crying. And I was like, yeah, mum, but i still got to get through the game tomorrow night. She goes, mate, just fake an injury. <laughs> just get, get through it. And I was like, oh, you can't do that. You still got to respect your club. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously then you ring your missus and all that after yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, mate, it was just incredible. And I never forget, like, because Loz was like, mate, just keep it a bit quiet because we haven't announced the teams yet. We'll do that tonight. And, um, you know, we're on the bus going to the airport and, you know, I'm with a couple of my closest mates, Dan Tedesco and um, Curtis Siren and Mitchie Moses and just sitting on the bus and uh, I couldn't hold it in. I told the boys and they're like, wow, no way. How good is that? I couldn't hold it in. I couldn't hold it in because, mate, them teammates love them to yeah, death. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, nah, boys, mate, I can't believe it. Because I was like shaking, mate. I was like, I was, and I'm, I'm a sweater as it is, but mm. I was sweating. Like, I couldn't stop sweating. And the boys, you were all right, mate. Everything okay? And, um, and I told them, and they're like, oh, that's unbelievable. It's the best ever. I was just like, mate, it was, it was such a, like, it's like, you know, there's phone calls that you get in your life, and that's the phone call you'll never forget, you know. And um, the hardest thing was playing that game on the Monday night because you didn't want to get injured. Like, going to that game and, like just thinking, geez, I've got origin in, in 10 days. Like mm. this is unbelievable. And then literally played that game. Um, the team come back at lunchtime. I had to get back on a six o'clock flight the next morning and then straight into the camp with the blues. Um, you know, we had a little bit of dramas that one. That was, uh, I think when Blake Ferguson got stood down. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. For an incident. And in, then in the shy of the Yeah. yeah. Mm. And then, um, we had a good day. Um, we had a couple of functions. We had a training session and then a good old bonding night after that. It was outstanding. And to that day is one of my favorite days because I got to roommate with one of my idols, Chucky Watmel, growing up because I was a Mad Manly supporter. Mm. So mm. Um, what a life-changing incident that was. Money can't buy feeling, eh? Oh, you can't, you're in the I'm getting juice by talking about it now, Maroon. But a, I, I, you know when... You, you know what, but that's, that's what I'm so happy for, blokes, you know, to be the peng -eye. You know, Nico Hines, just the call they would have got, the, like, yesterday... Just Hudson Young, yeah. even like Frizzell, he's been out for three years mm. and, you know, just the sheer joy that he would have had just getting that phone call from Freddie, like that is outstanding. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can't imagine, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I would argue that ANZ Stadium or a core stadium on an origin night has a better atmosphere than Suncorp. 100%. As, because it's got 80,000 people in there. Well, I debuted at Suncorp. Yeah. Um, so, so you ran out to all the booing and the yeah, hissing had a, and the mad thing was, I never forget it. Another little story. So we're in the huddle, we're warming up, everyone's getting going. Um, and then like Chucky grabbed me and goes, mate, get up the front. He goes, you want to get up the front and you want to, you want to witness this. So it was literally Gal, Farrah than me because all the boys pushed me up the front. And it was just the best, like, mate, it was unreal. Like it was goosebumps. But then when we ran out at, at um, stadium Australia, Unbelievable. Mm. Um, 80,000. You run out, you see the Blatchy Blues. There's a tiny patch of maroon. It's, oh, mate, it's honestly, it's the best ever. Like, you can't, like, as a person, like, sometimes there's there's things in games when now that, you know, I don't play Origin anymore, people go, do you miss many things? And I was like, that's probably one mm. of the moments you do miss. And, you know, I've heard Joey say, probably at sports lunches or whatever, that he ran out, you know, those, particularly as a younger man, you, you kick off. You're running around, you're tackling, you've got the ball in you, and you look up at the clock. It's 30 minutes down, 40 minutes yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the game goes so quick because the funny thing about Origin, you've you've caught Origin's performer, mm. and it's so loud. Like, you can't hear the person next to you. So you basically got to rely on what you've done at training and rely on instincts that you've done over the years because you've you got to rely on your second nature because you just can't hear people next to you. You can't even hear sometimes the training when he's running on. And then when he runs on, you're too busy in the play because there's not much stoppages, you know, there's only, only stoppages is probably the push and chubs you get this day and age, but mm. the game is so intense, it's so quick, it's so physical, and you just don't want to let your teammate down. Okay. Uh, we look forward to it, mate. Um, oh, I can't wait. I just yeah. can't wait to watch the new boys. Uh, it's what an honour, what an experience, and I hope they go so well.